Hey guys, and welcome to another week of hobby. So um, yeah, this week's been pretty full, and it's only just begun. Uh, I didn't get anything uh, like, well, I did a lot of a lot of hobby stuff over the last couple of days, but today, as of recording this first part, it's uh, Tuesday now uh, here in Australia, and um, yeah, I've already done a lot. So um, yeah, it's uh, going strong. So let's get into it. Well. Um, yeah, I managed to a few exciting things. I managed to um, release my first, I guess, little news video or whatever, vlog or whatever you want to call it, um, of um, upcoming releases. Um, this one's on Warhammer stuff, but hopefully in the future I'll be able to do more than just Warhammer releases. I'll be able to like, you know, hopefully the idea is to like pick out a range of stuff, you know, not ju not just not just Warhammer, so maybe pick um, like some cool Kickstarters or you know um, even just like individual artists that are producing nice stuff that are, that have something running at the time or you know just anything like a, a broad spectrum. That's the idea anyway, um, not to just focus solely on Warhammer all the time, um, but to have a, a few other things in there as well because you know especially for 3D printing and that sort of thing. There's like a whole world of um, other products out there that you can get your hands on to help you know. Uh, increase your uh, experience within the hobby so yeah but that's exciting so um, yeah if I'm good at some point in the next while I'm talking there'll be some link up in the top right hand corner that will uh, uh, link you to that um, video because by the time this comes out it should have already released this one this week's one so I'll be doing that weekly so that that increases the um, I guess the uh, number of videos to five now a week but the goal is to do like one every day so uh, the last two days worth um, I'm hoping to make uh, Blight of Gods related so that'll be the mix you know sort of uh, one portion of the week is my own stuff uh, for a couple of days and then and obviously through the hobby vlogs and so on you know you see these guys and stuff what I'm doing with Blight of Gods and then um, you know, the other five days are, you know, Warhammer content, tutorial content, um, you know, topical chat content, vlogs and that sort of thing. Um, and then more broadly with the news, like uh, upcoming uh, things that are that are outside of maybe Games Workshop and, and stuff like that. So you get a nice, a nice spectrum, hopefully over the week of um, not just GW stuff, but um, artist made stuff and and other other content creator or businesses that are making uh, content for our hobby so um, yeah that's the idea the long-term goal of it but yeah, I'm up to five um, and so far the production flow is pretty good so I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I can produce another two videos um, quite easily within my week within my schedule so that's pretty cool um, but we'll see we'll see I can't I, I won't uh, you know hold myself to it straight away because it's still early days but um, yeah it's looking pretty cool so that's all, all good um, and then I did uh, just did today um, the next installment for the Sepsmus uh, Plague, Plague Sworn uh, character here so we started on the armor so you can see it's looking pretty cool um, we did a bit of wet blending and a bit of layering and highlighting so this is in preparation for when we do the glazing so the, this this armor section is probably going to take a couple of weeks so the next tutorial will probably be on that as well and if i'm really good i'll put a link to this right now for the first one um you know and that'll bleed into the second which uh started off with the the skin and so on and then onto the armor um but yeah so that's really cool and, and i'm happy with how that's come out so it should work we're, we're trying to balance um reds and greens without them you know uh clashing or, or, or um you know, uh, deadening. So if you put red over green or vice versa, you're going to get gray. So a bit of art theory there. So um, the idea is to try to get them to meet somewhere so that you have a contrasting color. So like on the flesh, but you have separation as opposed to the armor. And that's what gives you a, a cool look. But when they're on top of each other, you know, it, it, it kills it. So it's an interesting thing to play with, especially in flesh. So the way it will be glazing probably will be with like uh, blues and purples. Um, rather than reds because that that won't work very well, but we'll have a little bit there But it'll be a yeah. Anyway, it's a process. So what else? Oh, and I finally got um, Here we go. I finally got uh, my first uh, flesh eater quartz characters together He's on like a whole mound of skulls, you know I'm, I'm imagining these guys in a massive midden pile, you know Like just all the various things that they've eaten just piled high and they're all just scrambling over the top of it. I think there's a bit of artwork that shows that kind of thing, like just piles and piles of corpses and um, and bones that they're uh, stashing away. 
after eating. So that's pretty cool. So I'm happy with him. So hopefully he'll end up becoming a tutorial as well, I'm hoping. And um, yeah, I've still got the, the good old sorts up here, <laughs> patiently waiting for me to finish them. Um, and obviously my, uh, my second last, uh, oh no, this is the last um, installment for uh, the Denizens of Catan series. So he's still at the same stage he was last week. Um, but I'll try to get some more, more colors down on him. Um, he's not going to be released till uh, June. So yeah, he, he, can, he can wait for a little bit. But I'll try to get some work on him this week. The main goal is to try to do more armor on that. Uh, get that prepared um, for a tutorial. And um, maybe uh, keep concentrating on, on the Lord of Contagion here. Um, but yeah. That should be cool. We'll see. We'll see how the week goes. I might be able to put some more of the ghouls together or something like that. Um, there's a lot more to do, uh, but yeah, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, yeah, it's been a, it's been a good little journey um, starting all this stuff and um, really, I suppose this year I've really like focused attention on it. Right, so like um, not just the YouTube channel and all of that, but just like trying to paint regularly, and that's something I've been talking about in those uh, in the hobby. Uh, vlogs and stuff like that over the, over the course of the last few weeks. Um, yeah, there's another good chance to put another link up there. Uh, if you want to listen to any of those, I just discuss some of those ideas and like, um, especially sort of like motivation and consistency and all that kind of stuff. And just, just how all of that informs like your, your hobby and, you know, cause you can get burnt out on this stuff and, and, you know, everyone, everyone goes through that with anything creative, really. Um, I certainly go through it with sculpting, you know, like it's not a, it's not like a, just like a pleasure thing constantly. There's, a, there's ups and downs and you have to, you know, work through that. And, and, and part of that is like figuring out what's important to you and then, you know, making sure you remind yourself of those facts before you decide to either stop or procrastinate or any of those type of things. You try to give yourself a moment to think about it and then maybe, not stop or, or continue on for a little bit longer or, um, you know, uh, push through those boundaries so that you sort of uh, build willpower and, and stamina for, for, for things like this. Because um, you don't have to do any of this stuff, right? Any of these hobbies, you just stop them whenever you want. And it's not really essential to life um, exactly. But as I've talked about in those, in those um, earlier vlogs and stuff, um, for me, it's kind of like a grounding rock and, and helps, keeps me sane, you know, like, um, the world is a crazy place, more so than ever these days. And something like this um, is like a very calming, you know, eye of the storm type uh, thing where you get to just be in the moment with these things. And um, it, 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 it's, it's not uh, confusing. There's no, you know, it's a very, very calm, straightforward uh, thing that you're doing and you just get to enjoy it for the time that you're there. And, and reminding yourself of that fact and why you're sitting down um, helps to get you in the chair because um, you ne you're, you're never sorry after sitting there at any time. You know, it might be hard to sit. It's, it's kind of like going to the gym, right? You go to the gym, oh God, I go to the gym again, do a bunch of weights, whatever. But, you know, once you push yourself to go and after that time, how tired you are, whatever, you always feel you know, exhilarated, elated because the, you know, the endorphins are running, everything is good. You're feeling, you know, you know, alive, you know, you've done something productive and not only that, but really productive for your body. And that's kind of like what the hobby is for your mind. You know, it's, it's doing the same kind of thing, but for your mind and, um, to, to, to push yourself to sit in the seat is, is really the important part. Uh, I remember, um, uh, who was it? Neil Gaiman, I think, I think it's Neil Gaiman that talked about like, um, how he would, um, you know, when he was sitting down to write, I think it was him that was talking about this in one of, you know, a talk that he had, uh, he would go and sit in the chair regardless of whether he would actually write anything. And so he, I think it was on a particular book or maybe it was just in general or in the early days. And so he would make sure he would sit uh, in that in that chair at the table, regardless of what he did. So whether he procrastinated or not, he still showed up every day and sat in the chair. Um, and then, you know, like always when you're bored, um, you will eventually, if you're not going anywhere and you're sitting there, you're eventually going to go, oh, I may as well do something. And then you start, you know, and it, and it begins. Uh, but, but that's, that's a really, you know, for me, that that's how that works a lot of the time. I'll sit down to sculpt or do something creative or, or in this case, painting miniatures. And I might just sit there and blankly look at it for a while. Uh, and that's totally fine. You know, it's like you're 
creativity doesn't just switch on straight away. It, it sometimes it simmers and it takes a while to build up the heat, you know, and, and then and then everything everything you know starts bubbling. So, just something to consider. But anyway, I won't. I'll stop ranting now because I can rant about these topics forever. Uh, and um, yeah, I'll see you soon, and hopefully the rest of the week uh, pans out well. All right, I'm back. So it's the weekend now, and um, yeah, I've managed to get a little bit more done, but not a huge amount. Um, but a couple of little exciting things, so that's kind of cool. So I'll take you through them before uh, we finish up this hobby vlog. Um, so firstly, the cool bit. Um, I've done some more work on the on the pale armor. So yeah, it's coming along really nice. So that's just uh, you know as part of the tutorial for this this one. So we have. Um, you know, just trying to get that that done. So when we go into the next the next stage, we can do all the glazing on, on the armor. So I'm really happy with how that's coming along. It looks really cool. So um, my fear was that it was going to deaden out, and you're going to get the the green uh, and any red that's in that corpse pale. Um, you know, sort of uh, cancel out and go grey, but it hasn't done that, which is really nice. So we've ended up with like a nice um, transition from that blue green uh, to that yellow pale color which is really cool so yeah it's definitely working and if you haven't seen the tutorial i've got it um by the time this video comes out there should be uh two um uh episodes of painting obsessimus here so you can follow along but hopefully i'll get this done and then the next one we can that will come next week we'll have the glazing otherwise it'll be two episodes of doing the armor but we'll I'll wait and see how we go um, but hopefully that will that will all work out um, yeah, really happy with how this is going. It's going to look really cool, and all the all the little glazing colors that go into this is going to um, yeah, just really really pop I think, and, and be a nice addition to the the other little uh, Black King uh, models that I'm doing. So that's really good. So we're on track with that one, which is really nice. Although I'm running low on corpse power, so I have to get some more. So that that might actually stall the tutorial if I can't get enough corpse power color, because. Um, a little pot here is basically run out and that's all I've got left so I'll need to grab some more if I'm going to finish this so yeah there may be a week delay on the next episode depending on um, if I can get access to that um, in time so yeah I haven't done anything more on the rest they're all at the same stage they were before um, however I did manage so I've talked about like um, going through and doing miniatures and um, you know I think I, I talked about like a wraith that I was going to do and um, I put a pause on that project uh, because I already have about like 15 sculpts that are, were designed for originally, you know, the Blight of Gods thing was going to be, um, you know, my brand links in the down there if you want to check it out, um, which is what this guy's from if you haven't uh, been following along. Uh, and yeah, I was going to do like uh, collectibles, like resin cast, like so sculpt digital, 3D print the master, make molds, uh, cast in resin and sell them as like, you know, garage kits and so on. But yeah. Um, because of the way the world is now and you know as we know everything's changed um that kind of business model is a little bit difficult when you're starting out it's gonna it's a bit yeah it's gonna be too too hard to do that so um i've gone for a more digital download uh version for the brand um and so doing such large scale pieces as a digital download it's probably a little bit much most people i don't think want to try to paint something as big as the ones that i've got if you have a look on my website you'll see them they're all about 11 inches tall and they're really awesome and they look cool at that scale but um which my sculpting skull tends to work better on these kind of slightly larger scales all my details come out a lot nicer so small scale doesn't work quite as well but i was trying to find what's the smallest i can go uh, to make it more user friendly for people and be able to uh, let them print it out and so i think i'm going to go for it's roughly a 70 75 80 mil size um so yeah i've got a little test piece here so this is him so my sculpting does come out pretty well on that small scale but that, the fingers are a little bit tiny but i might have to chunk them up a bit so they don't they're not so fragile but you can see all the detail in the body there in the face comes out pretty well and so i think this this is like if you compare it let's say to uh, the Terminator here, which is like 50, 54 mil or so high. So you can see now with, if, if he had his leg there, he's a, it's a bit tall, but anyway, you can see that his scale is a little bit bigger. So he's probably about the size of a Demon Prince or something like that, a bit bigger than a Demon Prince. So that's kind of like the scale of it. And, and so I think that'll work. 
So I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with that decision. So I think um, something like this, and they all have like a little sculpted base and stuff, but that's like big enough. Like this only took um, just these parts and it took it like less than two hours to print. So um, that's really good and, and very little uh, resin. So, you know, that's still very cost effective. So I think that might be the way to go, but we'll wait and see, but I'm gonna do a few more tests. And so I've got like 15 of them, so I can be bringing them out over the next year. Um, and hopefully people will enjoy that. and. Um, yeah, get into it because um, they are really cool and I'd hate not to be able to use them. It took me, you know, nearly like four or five years to, to develop the brand and sculpt all those. Um, you know, it took a couple of months for each of them to get them sculpted and then um, engineered to print and so on. But I do, I've got a lot of back work to like re-engineer them for download rather than casting because it's a different process. So yeah, we'll see how we go. But anyway, that's where I'm at. Uh, so a few exciting things going on, but um, yeah. I hope you guys are all having a good week with your hobby and um, getting onto it. And I guess I'll catch you next week with more. All right. See you later.